Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good night. Um, welcome back to uh, Real History, www.com. Uh, once again, the WW is short for Worldwide. And we're discussing the world's first human beings and all their civilizations were diverse blacks. Um, once again, um, as, you, as you can see, it talks about ancient cultures and civilizations. And when we last left off, we were on the topic of um, debunking the myths of certain, you know, so-called racial groupings, okay? And this section was at the so-called true Negro, okay? All right, so just click on that. And so we went through uh, the reason and the history for the term true Negro in pictures of modern Egyptians. Uh, we went through debunking the white man's ethnic science, pictures of modern Ni modern Ethiopians and Nigerians. And so right now we're going to take off at the history of North Africa, uh, Berbers, Torek, and Moors with pictures. All right, so let's click on this one. Okay, let me show simplified view. No. All right, so ancient man and his first civilizations. The True Negro 2A. The Berbers, Tory, Moors of North Africa. All of these terms are actually foreign designations and offensive to the people. Okay. Iberia, which is now Spain and Portugal. Okay. Here's a map of Portugal and Spain all the way over to the top left side. Okay. All right, <clears throat> the Iberian Peninsula, because of its close proximity to Africa, has been inhabited for at least one million years. At about 45,000 BC, the Khoisan-type African Grimaldi became the first modern man to enter Europe. As he crossed the Gibraltar Straits and started his journey across Europe. Europe and Africa are now separated by 7.7 .7 nautical miles. During glacial periods, it was much less. During the Neolithic expansion, various megalithic cultures developed in Iberia. An open seas navigation culture from the East Mediterranean probably from Crete, called the Cardium culture, also extended its influence to the eastern coast of Iberia, possibly as early as the 5th millennium BC. And here we have a modern sand bushman. Okay. In the Chalcolithic or Copper Age, <clears throat> 3000 BC in Iberia, a series of complex cultures developed, which would give rise to the first civilizations in Iberia and to extensive exchange networks reaching to the Baltic, the Middle East, and North Africa. At about 2150 BC, <clears throat> the Bell Beaker culture intruded into Chalcolithic Iberia, being of Celtic origin. Around 1100 BC, Phoenician merchants founded the trading colony of Gader or Gadis, modern day Cadiz, near Tartessos. In the 8th century BC, <clears throat> the first white, whites arrived. The Greeks established colonies such as Emporian, modern Empuries. These were found along the Mediterranean coast on the east, leaving the south coast to the Phoenicians. The Greeks are responsible for the name Iberia after the river Eber or Ebro. In the 6th century BC, the Phoenician Carthag Carthaginians arrived in Iberia while struggling with the Greeks for control of the western Mediterranean. Their most important colleague, colony was Carthago Nova, Latin name of modern day Cartagena. <clears throat> and here we have a 
a bronze bust of a lady of Empurie, Iberia, Spain, year 0 to 100 AD. Okay. In 219 BC, the first Roman troops invaded the Iberian Peninsula. This during the Second Punic War against the Carth Carthaginians. After two centuries of war with the Celtic and Iberian tribes, and also the Phoenician, Greek, and Carthaginian colonies, Rome annexed it under Augustus, resulted in the creation of the province of Hispania. Divided into Hispania, Ulterior and Hispani Hispania Citeria, during the late Roman Republic, and during the Roman Empire, it was divided into Hispania, Terraconensis in the northeast, Hispania, Betica in the south, and Lusitania in the southwest. In the early 5th century AD, new whites invaded. These were Germanic tribes from Eastern Europe, namely the Suevi, the Vandals, Silingi, and Hasdingi, and their allies, the Sarmatian Alans. Only the kingdom of Suevi, Cadi, and Marcomani would endure after the arrival of no another wave of Germanic invaders, the Visigoths, who had earlier established their own kingdom with its capital at Toulouse, France. They slowly extended their authority into Hispania, displacing the Vandals and Alans. The Visigoths subsequently conquered all of the Iberian Peninsula and expelled or partially integrated the Vandals and the Alans. The Visigoths eventually conquered the Suvi Kingdom and its capital city, Bacara, modern-day Braga. In 584 to 585 AD, they would also conquer the province of the Byzantine Empire, Spania, in the south of the peninsula and the Balearic Islands. <clears throat> All right, the Moors. White historians, in their bid to make ancient Europeans seem white, have chosen to ignore the obvious relationships that must have existed between Berbers and the people of Iberia. When Grimaldi crossed the Gibraltar Strait to enter Europe, all of his kind did not follow. When humans moved to new territories, most stayed behind in the old territory, and they maintained their relationships. There is always back and forth travel for trade and communication. It is against this backdrop that the Berber invasion of Iberia must be viewed. The Berbers did not enter Iberia as destroyers. They entered as builders. So perhaps they were the same people. Okay. Thus, after Muhammad's Islamic army took Egypt in 640 AD and then went on to conquer all of North Africa, the Berbers no doubt saw this new black army as an opportunity. So rather than fight, the Berbers joined forces with the Islamic army. In 711 AD, a Berber army led by General Tariq ibn Zayed invaded Iberia, which is now Spain, and overthrew the white Visigoths, Western Goths, who were one of two main branches of the Goths, an East Germanic tribe who over the period of only 100 years had migrated from Eastern Europe through Greece, through Italy, and finally down to the Iberian Peninsula. In Iberia, Spain and Portugal, the Berbers now known as Moors, created, created a highly advanced civilization and culture, famous for its art, 
architecture and center of learning. While having ruled over Spain, the Berbers, who themselves 50 years earlier had been forced to accept Islam, now sometimes forced the inhabitants of Iberia to do, the, to do the same. Though the number of original Moors remained small, many native Iberian inhabitants converted to Islam. According to the Ronald Siegel, some 5.6 million of Iberia's 7 million inhabitants were Muslim by 1200 AD, virtually all of them native inhabitants. According to historian Richard A. Fletcher, the number of Arabs who settled in Iberia was very small. There were about 900,000 Berbers and about 90,000 Arabs in, Arab in Iberia. More history below. Okay, so let's look at some pictures. Here we have on the left portrait of a Moor chieftain at the Philadelphia Art Museum. And to the right, we have the Beha of Sudan are believed to have originally been a Berber tribe. Okay, So the Moors who entered Spain in, I believe, 711 AD and took it over and uh, you know, civilized those peoples. Um, to the left, Moor chieftain and the Beha of Sudan are believed to have originally been a Berber tribe. Okay. Let's look at some more pictures. <clears throat> okay. So you get the context. Okay, so you can take a look at this picture a little while. Okay. Slowly but surely. All right. This picture is the title is "The Entrance of Mohammed II," which was painted by Benjamin Jean Joseph Constant, eighteen forty-five to nineteen o two. Okay. So that's the entrance of Muhammad II. Notice that Muhammad is a black man. Okay. All right. Muslim Spain and European culture. And this is by, I believe, Dean Derhak. <clears throat> when you think of European culture, one of the first things that may come to your mind is the Renaissance. Many of the roots of European culture can be traced back to the glorious time of art, science, commerce, and architecture. But did you know that long before the Renaissance, there was a place of hum hum humanistic beauty in Muslim Spain? Not only was it artistic, scientific, and commercial, but it also exhibited incredible tolerance, imagination, and poetry. Moors as the Spaniard called the Muslims, populated Spain for nearly 700 years. As you'll see, it was their civilization that enlightened Europe and brought it out of the Dark Ages to usher in the Renaissance. Many of their cultural and intellectual influences still live with us today. Okay, moving on up. Way back during the 8th century, Europe was still knee-deep in the medieval period. That's not the only thing they were knee-deep in. In his book, The Day the Universe Changed, the historian James Burke described how the typical European townspeople lived. The inhabitants threw all their refuse into the drains in the center of the narrow streets. The stench must have been overwhelming. Though it appears to have gone virtually unnoticed, mixed with excrement and urine would be the soil reeds and straw used to cover the dirt floors. This squalid society was organized under a feudal system and had little that would resemble a com commercial economy. Along with other restrictions, the Catholic Church forbade the lending of money which did not help get things booming much. Anti-Semitism, previously rare, began to increase. Money lending 
which was forbidden by the church, was permitted under Jewish law. Burke, 1985, page 32. Jews worked to develop a currency, although they were heavily persecuted for it. Medieval Europe was a miserable lot, which ran high in illiteracy, superstition, barbarism, and filth. Okay. During this time, Arabs entered Europe from the south. Abd el Rahman the first, a survivor of a family of caliphs of the Arab Empire, reached Spain in the mid seven hundreds. He became the first caliph of Al Andalus, the Moorish part of Spain, which occupied most of the Iberian Peninsula. He also set up the Umayyad dynasty that ruled Al Andalus for over three hundred years. Grolier, History of Spain. Al Andalus means the land of the Vandals, from which comes the modern name Andalusia. Okay, here's a mosque. The Dome of the Rock, excuse me, it's a Dome of the Rock. Jerusalem, built by Arab Umayyad Caliph Abd al Malik Ibn Mawan, 685 and 691 AD. Okay. At first, the land resembled the rest of Europe in all its squalor, but within 200 years, the Moors had turned Al Andalus into a bastion of culture, commerce, and beauty. Irrigation systems important, imported from Syria and Arabia turned the dry plains into an agricultural cornucopia. Olives and wheat had always grown there. The Arabs added pomegranates, oranges, lemons, aubergines, artichokes, cumin, coriander, bananas, almonds, pams, henna, woad, madder, saffron, sugarcane, cotton, rice, figs, grapes, peaches, apricots, and rice. Burke. 1985, page 37. By the beginning of the 9th century, Moorish Spain was the gem of Europe with its capital city, Cordova, with the establishment of Abdurrahman III, the great caliphate of Cordova. Came the golden age of Al Andalus. Cordova in southern Spain was the intellectual intellectual center of Europe. Okay, and here we have some pictures. Entrance to a Moor fortress, Alcazar, uh, palace garden, courtyard. Okay, leave that at the top. <clears throat> at a time when London was a tiny mud hut village that could not boast of a single street lamp, Digest, 1973, page 622, in Cordova, there were half a million inhabitants living in 113,000 houses. There were 700 mosques and 300 public baths spread throughout the city and its 21 suburbs. The streets were paved and lit. Burke, 1985, page 38. The houses had marble balconies for summer and hot air ducks under the mosaic floors for the winter. They were adorned with gardens with artificial fountains and orchids. Digest, 1973, page 622. Paper, a material still unknown to the West, was everywhere. There were bookshops and more than 70 libraries. Burke, 1985, page 38. This rich and sophisticated society took a tolerant view towards other faiths. Tolerance was unheard of in the rest of Europe. But in Moorish Spain, thousands of Jews and Christians lived in peace and harmony with their Muslim overlords. Burke, 1985, page 38. <coughs> 
excuse me, the society had a lit liter literary rather than religious base. Economically, their prosperity was unparalleled for centuries. The aristocracy promoted private land ownership and encouraged Jews in banking. There was little or no Muslim proselytizing. Instead, non-believers simply paid an extra tax. Okay. And here we have pictures of uh, Spain or Iberia, the Moors. In another of James Burke's works titled Connections, he describes how the Moors thawed out, uh, out Europe from the Dark Ages. <clears throat> but the event that must have done more for the intellectual and scientific revival of Europe was the fall of Toledo in Spain to the Christians in 1105. In Toledo, the Arabs had huge libraries containing the laws to Christian Europe works of the Greeks and Romans along with Arab philosophy and mathematics. The Spanish libraries were open, revealing a store of classics and Arab works that staggered Christian Europeans. Burke, 1978, page 123. Okay, the intellectual plunder <clears throat> of Toledo brought the scholars of Northern Europe like moths to a candle. The Christians set up a giant translating program in Toledo, Excuse me. using the Jews as interpreters, they translated the Arabic books into Latin. These books included most of the major works of Greek, science, and philosophy, along with many original Arab works of scholarship. Digest, page 622. The intellectual community, which the northern scholars found in Spain, was so far superior to what they had at home that it left a lasting jealousy of Arab culture which was to color Western opinions for century. Burke, 1985, page 41. Okay. The subjects covered by the text include medicine, astrology, astronomy, pharmacology, psychology, physiology, zoology, biology, botany, mineralogy, optics, chemistry, physics, mathematics, algebra, geometry, trigonometry, music, meteorology, geography, mechanics, hydrostatistics, navigation, and history. Burke, 1985, page 42. These works alone, however, did not kindle the fire that would lead to the Renaissance. They added to Europe's knowledge, but much of it was unappreciated without a change in the way Europeans viewed the world. So here we have a picture. A picture speaks for itself. Uh, this is a uh, Moorish Spain, okay, in the Alhambra, uh, painted by Rudolf Ernst. 1854 to 1932, okay? And this is the Moors of Spain or Europe. Okay, and this one says, the Alhambra, Kelet Alhambra, the red fortress, is a palace and fortress complex constructed during the mid 14th century by the Moorish rulers of Al Andalus, occupying a hilly terrace on the southeastern border of the city of Grenada. Right? And notice the Moors, the rulers of Spain.
Picking the Favorite, Giulio, Giulio Rosati, 1858 to 1917. Okay, it says, the Berbers, Moors, like the Arabs, were very fond of Turkish women. They kept their harems well stocked with them. And notice the Moors are black men. And these women by now are admixed pretty much. Darker olive, uh, I shouldn't say olive, but a darker complexion, darker hair. Um, uh, okay, anyways, moving on. So you look at the picture, you see the Moors. And you see the Turkish women. All right. And let's look at some more pictures. Here, on the left, we have, let's see what it says on the left. Standing guard, Rudolf Ernst, 1854 to 1932. So this guy on the left is a guard. And he's guarding some important figure, perhaps. Notice he has a sword. And perhaps it looks like another dagger or a knife or some sharp uh, object. And to the left, we have the kings of Moorish Spain, perhaps. Let's see what it says. Uh, this says, summary judgment under the Moorish king of kings of Grenada, Henry Renault, 1843-1871. So these are the rules of uh, Spain. From 711, I believe, to like 1491. And notice what they are. The Moors. Civilized Europe. Notice the Moor. Or he's a king. Okay. The guard to the left. Summary judgment. Lost his head. So let's look at another picture. Here we have what's obviously a Moor, a black man. A Moor presenting a parrot to a lady. Nicholas Piers Bersham, 1620 to 1683. Okay. Take a look at that again. Another picture. Sorry about that, guys. My cell phone was ringing. Okay, guys. So what we're going to do is I have a incoming call. And so we're going to have to pick up um, <laughs> where we left off. And this is... Uh, uh, Moorish bath, a Turkish woman, bathing. Uh, number two, Jean Leon Jerome. Okay, all right, guys. So I have to be heading out to work. That was my job, and so I just wanted to share this thing with you. So we're gonna pick off where we left off last time. So this is part one, and then we'll pick up right at the Moorish bath, Turkish woman, bathing. Number two, Jean Leon Jerome, eighteen twenty-four to nineteen o four. And uh, we'll start off at the beginning of the end. Portrait of a Moor Soldier. Okay, guys? Thank you very much. Uh, once again, you can check out the website, Real History 